Um, just a bit about myself. Um, I am the e-recruitment manager. Um, I currently lead the team who support the technology within Police Scotland and are responsible for configuration and build and the change processes. Um, I've just put a little slide up here of all our pictures, the ones that we're really proud of in Scotland. Um, a number of our officers who have been successfully recruited in the last couple of years. And I thought I would put a wee picture of our castle, which is our headquarters in Scotland. I don't think many other people have got a castle as a headquarters. And it's very beautiful. So if you're ever up in Scotland, please go and see it. It's, it's worth a visit. Um, and it is open to the public. You can wander around the grounds. So I thought I'd give a bit of, a bit of context into Police Scotland and, and what we're all about. Um, just a few stats to let you understand some of the, um, the size of our operation. So we're the second biggest force in the UK behind the Met. We have 16,500 police officers and 6,000 police staff. And so our recruitment um, function is pretty big actually. Um, always demanding, always challenging. We recruit up to a thousand new police officer recruits every year. Um, last year we appointed over a thousand members of police staff roles and we've received nearly 37,000 applications into our system since our e-recruitment system went live two and a half years ago. Recruitment team wise we've got 48 in our recruitment team. Um, they are a combination of police officers and police staff, all dedicated to the function, and they're based up in Aberdeen in the north of the country and over at East Kilbride in the west. So that just gives you a wee idea about the size. So um, today I'm going to talk about our experience and our journey of going from nothing at all, no technology, to having a system that's fully operational in recruitment. Um, so back in 2020, before we had a system, our recruitment teams at Police Scotland were very frustrated by the lack of technology. And for an organisation our size, it resulted in high volumes of data and paperwork with no easy way to manage it. And quite simply, our teams were drowning in paperwork and exhausted with the scale of the challenge that we faced every day coming to work. But the other thing for us as well was we were actually quite embarrassed by it because we were proud of our function and it's very, very difficult to appeal to candidates and give a good candidate experience when you're working with no system whatsoever. So I thought I would give you some images just to show you exactly how bad it was. It's the only way I can really show it, to be honest. Um, so this is pre-2021. At any one time, we would have 4,000 applications in a pipeline for police officer. Um, when I first arrived in recruitment in 2007, they were using cardboard boxes, but they kept falling to bits every time we lifted them. So we got in a van and went to IKEA Glasgow and got lots of plastic buckets <laughs> because we thought, we thought that was safer. Um, but you can see just how inefficient um, and so labour intensive that is. And it, the challenge we had was, how do you report when your applications are sitting in plastic buckets? Um, one of the things that we used to dread was, how many people have you got in your pipeline? Um, we used to dread that question. And our teams would have to physically count that every week. Um, and actually, it was at the point where Having finished physically counting it, it probably had changed by the time they had done it. Um, having a system like this led to manual duplication as well. So we had the spreadsheets, we had SharePoint, we had all the stuff, all the files. Um, just a nightmare. But the biggest one for us, and I've already touched on it, was the candidate experience. Because it's, it's really difficult to present yourself as an employer of choice if you've got a candidate experience like that. Um, candidates for the police, as an example, could take up to 12 weeks to even get an application acknowledgement, which is just not acceptable as far as we were concerned. And the other one was high risk, obviously, for data protection. We were on a, a red risk register for years and years because of the, the risk that we were presenting to the organisation. And this is 2024. Paperwork is gone. We are fully automated. We've got the technology in. Um, we've got an e-recruitment system that's operating so well for us. Um, you're not allowed to mention the word spreadsheet in our department. If you do, you have to justify why you're doing it. 
Um, we have managed to sell all the IKEA buckets. We have no cupboards left um, and everything just feels so much better. But in actual fact, um, the journey has been really quick actually, because that was only 2021 um, that we brought it in. And here we are in 2024, really positive, really happy with our system and looking to the future as well. I just want to very quickly touch on the process of that. Um, we, we made some good decisions. Um, we had a dedicated project team to bring it in, um, which was key. And within that dedicated project team, we made sure we had the right people. And I think one of the important things was the people that were within that team were from recruitment. Um, and they knew what they were doing and they knew what we wanted to do. We knew the challenges, we knew all the things that we wanted for the system. And so having those people within that project team we, were key. I mean, obviously we had to have technical expertise into it from IT, we had to have a business analyst. Um, and the other thing was we had a really strong relationship with the supplier, with Leo, who were able to support us all the way. We tried to do it very quickly. We tried to do it in three months. We didn't manage that. Um, so we ended up having to go to a phased approach where we brought the system in in phases according to the rules, which worked really well for us. And the other key thing was we decided we had to future-proof it. It wasn't off the shelf, it's fully configurable, and it meant that we can look to the future to see how we can change it and adapt um, as things progress. A few stats. Now in 2024, just to give you an idea of how it's changed our world, um, efficiency, we've reduced our application processing time from 12 weeks down to 24 hours. That means that for a police officer applicant at the minute, we can have them booked into a process within a day, which is incredible for us. Candidate experience, we um, always wanted to know what the candidate thought because candidate experience is really important to us. So our stats from our latest surveys that we did on, on our system rate us as 98% is good and excellent, which is brilliant for us. Time to hire, because we've reduced our application processing times and automated a lot of our processes, we have reduced our time to hire down from six months down to three, which is great news for our senior management team, who that was a real pinch point for us. Um, and the other one that I thought I would bring out as well is that our teams were involved in heavy lifting, were involved in administration, duplication of effort, but now our teams are being deployed with more value-added tasks, and that's about moving them on to other things like attraction, because we are struggling to attract applicants. I thought I'd pick out just a couple of examples. I won't um, spend too much time in these, but these are the ones that our team have picked out as where it's transformed their world. Interview scheduling, um, ability for candidates to book in, put, pick their own slots, it removes all the invite and scheduling pain. Um, and we used to have real challenges with that because we're booking in high volumes of candidates. We'd be bringing police officer applicants, for instance, in for a, a standard entrance test, which we still do the old fashioned pen and paper way in an exam room. And we can bring in 200 at a time. So you can imagine having to invite 200 people in without technology was quite a challenge. So that's a big bit for us. Um, and that's just a wee summary of, of the, some of the, the way we use it. Um, we've got automatic booked emails, we've got an integration with MS Teams. We do an automated upload of ID documents that's removed all that administration and pain. And we've also got a system where they can, the hiring managers can upload their paperwork direct. Um, over here on the right hand side, it's just a wee screenshot of um, how we use the system in terms of the talent engagement side of things. Um, we use that very heavily in our system just to um, present information to candidates as they go through their journey with recruitment. Another example we've got is our, um, our contracts. So our contracts and our, our offer um, processes were, again, very um, admin heavy for us. And our team actually just can't believe now how simple it is just to send someone an offer on the system that they can accept online and immediately start undertaking the onboarding process, which has become so efficient for us. And that's just a couple of screenshots to show you. And um, we've got our... Um, all our forms and all our onboarding information in the system. And beyond just the recruitment team, we've now brought on our HR team and our probation or training teams on so that they can directly access our technology and lift the information off. Um, when we took on our ATS, we made a very important and critical decision, and that was to have a dedicated team in Police Scotland to run it and manage it. 
And the reason that that was a critical decision for us is because we struggle with budget, we struggle um, in terms of resources, and we need to future-proof our system. So we have already made huge savings just by having a dedicated team that can configure and manage and build. And it means our system is not going out of date. It means we're always at the front rather than trying to play catch-up. So that has been a really, really important decision for us. What we hope to achieve next We've got some developments coming in the system in relation to police officers. Uh, we would like to get our lateral posts and promotion processes onto it that are currently still got a few buckets hanging about in that function, so we want to get that on there. We want to start looking at talent pools. We find it very difficult to, um, to recruit for certain roles. Our digital division IT roles are, are a key example of that. So we want to start looking at that area of the system. And AI has already been talked about. That's where we're looking next. Um, Instead of being behind, we're trying to be at the front. So we're delighted to be involved in the, the user group that Leo is setting up, and we're going to be part of that. We've already got a working group set up within Police School to start looking at that and having conversations about AI. And we're really looking to make that one of our strategic priorities for the next year. Just pulled out some top tips from us. Um, be prepared for the impact of change in people when you bring in technology and making changes, because um, that was big for us, um, probably one that we didn't really, weren't really um, ready for. Um, I've already touched on this, invest in an expert team to manage your technology and just always keeping it modern, always keeping it fresh, and also be resilient enough and plan for the longer term. And I've put this, this photograph up because this is a photograph that we always present to our recruitment teams when we're doing, we're doing continuous professional development and training. And it's just to remind all our teams what our end goal is. Um, this is the first um, intake of police officers that were fully recruited through our ATS with, with no paper. Um, so we, we, we remind ourselves that that's the end goal and we're very proud of that photograph. That's them all at the, at the castle taking their oath of office. And that's my contact details as well. Um, if anybody would like to uh, speak to me, I don't know whether that's a good idea to actually put my contact details. I think, the I think the last time I did that, I came back to about 50 emails. But anyway, um, I would be delighted to talk to any of you and I look forward to meeting you all through the day as well. <laughs>